so it would be turned around as quickly as the Battle of Cannae. This was a major battle of the Second Punic War fought between the numerically superior forces of the Latin early Roman Republic and their Punic Mediterranean rival, Carthage. The battle occurred on August 2nd, 216 BC, near the town of Cannae in Apulia, located in southeast Italy. The war began due to the Romans breaking a treaty with Carthaginians. This treaty outlined the two powers' areas of influence and territory following the first war between them. The Iberian Peninsula up to the Ebro River was to be under Carthaginian control. However, the Romans allied with the city of Segunta, that was south of the Ebro River and as according to the treaty, was under Carthaginian influence. Hannibal attacked Segunta to expel this clear defiance of the treaty, and this sparked the Second Punic War. The Mediterranean power of Carthage sent the general Hannibal Barca to attack the Italian peninsula. Hannibal did this not by sea, but by marching through Iberia and southern Gaul, collecting recruits and then famously crossing the Alps. He raided the country, destroyed enemy supplies, and crushed Roman forces. This led the Romans to amass a huge army to confront Hannibal in a battle near the town of Cannae. On the Carthaginian side, there were 10,000 cavalry, some of which were skirmishers ready to hurl their javelins at the enemy. As well as 8,000 Libyan infantry that had been with Hannibal since the start of the campaign. There also were 24,000 Iberian and Gaelic troops that had joined Hannibal during his march through Iberia and Gaul, willing to fight against their mutual Roman foe. Finally, there were 8,000 skirmishers and slingers ready to combat the enemy. On the Roman side there were 15,000 skirmishers, 55,000 infantry, and 6,000 cavalry. The Carthaginian forces were commanded by the famous military commander, Hannibal, whose tactics played a significant role in the battle's outcome. The Romans, however, were led by consuls Lucius Aemilius Paulus and Gaius Terentius Varro, who rotated command between themselves daily as they were leading all eight legions instead of the regular maximum of four, and were thus not permitted to have sole command as dictated by the Senate. On the day of battle, Varro was in command of the army. The field of battle would be confined by a river to the northwest and mountains to the southeast. This would protect the flanks of the armies from any encirclement and force a more compact formation for the huge Roman army. Both forces sent their ranged skirmishers out first, but Hannibal's skirmishers were ordered to create as much dust as possible in order to conceal the army's formation and movements. The Carthaginians maintained their ground and used the dust kicked up by the skirmishers to cover their change into a scape or V-shaped formation with the point facing the enemy. This would weaken the initial charge of the Romans and give the Carthaginians more of a fighting chance against the huge horde. The cavalry on the flanks came next, with the Carthaginian cavalry outnumbering the Romans. It was an easy victory, which sent the cavalry charging far behind the Roman force, running down anyone attempting to retreat. began their advance.
the Carthaginians fought hard. However, the Roman horde broke through the center of the Carthaginian force anyway, and in a bloody frenzy, lost their formation as the mob chased after the fleeing enemy. What the Romans did not expect was that there would be Carthaginian reserves awaiting on their flanks, ready to strike. The Carthaginians fell upon them, nearly surrounding the Romans completely, except for their rear. Now the Romans were the ones beginning to lose, and at that moment the Carthaginian cavalry returned and charged the flank of the Roman force, completely surrounding them. The Roman formation got tighter and tighter as the battle went on. Carthaginians kept pushing, the Romans kept losing ground. Roman flanks began to retreat, but the encircled mass was slaughtered as Hannibal did not have the means to take so many prisoners. Consuls and conscripts suffered alike at the hands of the Carthaginians.
Thus, the battle ended in a Roman defeat, which historians would mark down as one of the greatest defeats in all of history, and one of the greatest military accomplishments ever to be made. This battle immortalized Hannibal into history, as his foes, the Romans, now feared his very name. Now, the Romans were powerless against Hannibal. However, he could not finish them off with the troops he had left, nor would the Romans surrender. To make things worse, the capital, Carthage, refused to send reinforcements his way, as the war was portrayed to be in his own self-interest by a political rival who feared Hamill gaining too much power.